here as we approach the set of guns on the Clackamas. The very landscape trembles with the genius of Houghton P. Jeffers. The leaves on the trees pulsate with creativity, and the grass and the ground throbs in the knowledge that here in this quiet corner of the universe, a white-hot cataclysm of artistic expression is being generated in the mind of the genius that is Houghton P. Jeffers. Excuse me, we are here to do a documentary on guns on the Clackamas. A good man, Mr. Houghton Jeffers, invited me to be here himself. Look, here is a letter from Mr. Jeffers. Perhaps you are unaware of who I am. You watch PBS? Haven't you seen Do Elephants Sweat? It had that great scene in it with two pachyderms mating in the mud. It was a classic. We'll be back. Actually, I prefer not to have the full cooperation of my subjects. It gives me more objective freedom that way. It is ironic to think that the son of a dairy farmer from southern New Jersey who did not see his first film, a western naturally, until he was 13, would go on to become the cinema legend he is today. Houghton Jeffers' early fascination with the west can be seen in this rare archival footage of his first film, Frog Cowboys. Well, Bart, this town is too small for the both of us. You better leave Dry Gulch. Not without Missy Ann. We're in love and we're gonna get married. Oh, Bart, be careful. Not perhaps John Ford, but even here, one can see glimmerings of talent seeping through. His favorite film studio was Prestige Pictures. And one night, Houghton Jeffers took over the third floor men's room and turned it into his office, taking half his operating budget in tree air fresheners. He labeled himself executive producer, and no one knew the difference. Speaking on the telephone, he was often asked the source of the unmistakable bodily sounds emanating from his office, and these he explained away as sound effects from his latest large screen extravaganza. Fulton Jeffers' first film, Dracula Cowboys, a very low budget horror flick was an instant smash on the drive-in circuit and Houghton Jeffers was on his way. Well, Bart, this town is too small for the both of us. You must leave Dry Gulch. Not without Missy Ann. She loves me and we're going to get married. Oh, Bart, be careful. Of course, the rest is history. Who could forget such classics as Cowboys of the Plains, Sierra Cowboys, and Western Cowboy. Of all the years I've worked in Hollywood, I've always wanted to make a picture for Holton P. Jeffers. I think if you look at my films, Drugstore Cowboy or even Cowgirls Get the Blues, you can tell that he's been a major influence on my work. This is where the entire event took place. Here, a piece of paper with some pencil scribbling on it. Perhaps part of the gun's script. And here, some ashes. And here, a cigarette butt, perhaps actually smoked by the director during the intense throes of creativity. Standing here, I breathe the emotions that must have been generated during this paradoxical landmark venture. And to think it all started on this very spot with such high hopes. Ever since white man first set foot upon this pristine land, they have raped and defiled the people and the land for their personal greed. It is my fondest hope that this film will right the wrongs our forefathers have wrought upon this territory. My prayer is that when this film is completed, the world will be a nicer, gentler place for our children. And now, to lead us in a prayer for the sacredness of the land is chief face in the wind. 
O oh, great spirit of the earth, the wind and the water, these people from the land of palm trees have come to our land to right the wrongs of the past. Bless these people and their instruments of cinemagraphic arts. Bless them with sunny days and shield them from the crawly green thingies that live in the tall grass. If one listens very carefully, one can still hear the word of the camera, the click of the slate, and the word action from Mr. Houghton P. Jefferson. I must say I'm proud to be involved in a project of this caliber and magnitude. As you probably know, I come from a bit less commercial side of filmmaking. My greatest project, of course, being Orifice. Orifice was a truly landmark visual poem where I lay myself bare to the world. I was saying, here I am, take me as I am, I hide nothing. Uh, oh, wait, wait, before we start, uh, I want to show you something. Come with me. Something, isn't it? Mr. Jeffers gave it to me last year. You know, I have the world's second largest collection of big eye art. Follow me along. Look at the eyes, the life and the light. Remarkable. And over here, the sadness, the eyes, the trash. Very sad picture. My next project, Follicle, was a concept piece. A metaphor for human growth and the everyday slaughter of the human condition. I wanted to keep a visual diary of the mass murder of my hair. And then, of course, I did bed sore. You know, when we were going through all the turmoil of Guns and the Clackamas, I would come in here and look at this picture, and a sense of calm and, and well-being would consume my soul. You can feel it, can't you? It's like a, uh, it's like a religious experience. My early films were just a microcosm as compared to the large canvas that the uh, West provided by guns on the Clackamas. Well, if I recall, Mr. Jeffers had us all in his office uh, to talk to us about making guns a, uh, an all-Indian Western. I quickly corrected him by saying that uh, they prefer to be called Native Americans. Saul said they were Native Americans, and I corrected him. They prefer the term Inuits. Mr. Jeffers stated, OK, Inuit Indians. I want to hire them for all the roles. So I said, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's great, but uh, what about the blacks? They've also been neglected in Westerns. They prefer to be called African Americans. Mr. Jeffers said, great, let's hire a lot of them too. But you can't forget about Jewish Americans, Asian Americans, Irish Americans. They all suffered in history. Women have always been mistreated by history too. Mr. Jeffers agreed, let's hire a lot of them women Americans. Feminine Americans. Female Americans, what about all the abused animals? And what about plants? What about all the insects that died from DDT? Okay, we'll hire a lot of horse Americans and sheep Americans. At that point, my notes get very blurry because everyone was arguing so much. There is something here about Mr. Jeffers storming out of the room in disgust. The topic was never really brought up again. 
We were uh, fortunate enough to get a uh, financier who has excellent taste and uh, was simpatico with our vision and who was also uh, filthy R-I-C-H. <laughs> the early footage looks fantastic. Horst was uh, very pleased. Unfortunately, he had this uh, one little demand. Bambi Star is a fantastic performer. She's not unlike my broadwurst. Perfection. You see, he had this uh, uh, mistress, for lack of a better term. She was uh, very pretty and quite photogenic, but uh, she had this one little problem. This was a big budget film. I mean, whatever could they be thinking of? Didn't they do any sound tests? So of course we waived the sound test for her. Horse insisted on it, being her first movie and all. America will love both my sausage and Bambi. Horse said, treat her with kid gloves. Looking back on it, I like to treat her with boxing gloves. Helen, oh my darling. Helen, I still can't believe I've been away so long. You still look as beautiful as ever. Helen, tell me you still love me. Oh, sanity. I love you. Well, in my career as a speech therapist, I've seen a lot of stuttering cases, but Miss Starr had the worst case I've ever seen. Now, usually it's a result of some kind of childhood trauma, but in this case, I think it was just from being around Horst on a regular basis. I couldn't believe it. And the weird part is she was fine in normal conversation, but when that camera turned on, forget it. I... 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 You leave the camera rolling. She's got to learn to speak while the camera is on. No, 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 no. I... 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 She must have had the first day jitters. You... Now, you want my professional opinion. Usually, the problem is caused by the trachea, the esophagus, but in Miss Starr's case, I think it stemmed from the uvula. We tried everything to relax her. We gave her a few drinks to try to calm her nerves. <laughs> Some people would see Bambi's speech impediment as a real stumbling block. But I present the opinion that one can manipulate any situation to your advantage. Stop stuttering! <laughs> Mommy and Daddy never let me play with my little dolly! <laughs> the film was going right down the tubes. So uh, I immediately called Mr. Jeffers and Mr. Hinkle to set up an emergency meeting. Uh, Mr. Hinkle insisted that it was a superficial problem. Uh, Horst said that uh, that's the magic of Hollywood, is uh, taking reality and making fantasy. He said that uh, if they weren't professional enough to work with Miss Starr, then uh, we shouldn't be in the film business. I love you. That was perfect. <laughs> Those Hollywood people, they are, they are so superficial. They must learn to look past the surface vocal qualities and see the, the purity and the raw talents that lies underneath. They must give the girl a chance. It wasn't the sound guy's fault either. He tried over 2,000 individual sounds just to get it right. I believe that the job we did to cover her impediment was Oscar material. Right, son? Helen, oh my darling. Helen, I still can't believe I've been away so long. You still look as beautiful as ever. Helen, tell me you still love me.
So I'm fast asleep and I get this phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's Horst. He says he has the answer to all our problems. He's got some harebrained, whacked out idea about making Guns in the Clackamas an all yodeling Western musical. So I get this phone call at 3.15 in the morning. It's Horst. He wants to turn the Guns on the Clackamas into an all yodeling Western musical. So I get this phone call at 3.20 in the morning. It's Horst. He wants to turn the film into an all yodeling Western musical. So I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a brilliant idea. Why not make Guns on the Clackamas an all yodeling musical Western? Hmm. Well, why not yodeling? It is a pure and noble art form. It's a new and revolutionary genre. Of course, Mr. Jeffers did not like this idea at all. He hit the ceiling. Horse threatened to pull a plug on the whole film if we didn't try his uh, revolutionary idea. This film could, could set trends and establish precedents all over the movie industry. So, I'm going to show you. It's amazing how well the yodeling synced up to her stutters. This was a breath of fresh air. It's something that no one in Hollywood has seen since the likes of Citizen Kane. the role so well and the yodeling I never knew he had it in him yodel yodel yay hee hoo uh, well that's not very good I know but it's not as good as my broadfast I couldn't believe we tried such a thing it looked good on paper after a while the uh, crew was laughing so hard you couldn't even hear the yodeling looked real good on paper we had high hopes that it would be the new Oklahoma <laughs> Mr. Jeffers was not amused I've never seen him react so violently to a screening he ordered everyone out except uh, Mr. Hinkle and Miss Starr. As we all waited in the lobby, it sounded pretty nasty in there. Lots of threats and accusations. World War II all over again. Then Miss Starr came running out, screaming and stuttering, with the horse behind her. Then he turns and yells at Mr. Jeffers in his thick German accent. As far as I'm concerned, you're through in the Eastern Hemisphere. Miss Starr came running out, and uh, Mr. Heinkel followed and yelled to Mr. Jeffers, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're through in the Eastern Stratosphere. And he said, you're true to Ernest Hemingway. You're through in the Eastern Hemorrhoid again. You fool your hemoglobin. Whatever that means. Well, they could have maintained financial stability simply by amateurizing the liquidity on a semi-annual basis, thereby maximizing the fiduciary vectors. Or well, the interest alone on the annuities and the bond debentures, that would have paid for the day-to-day -day operating costs. And then when Mr. Henkel pulled out, all our finances collapsed, we were back to square one. But fortunately, the ever-resourceful Mr. Jeffers, he had other options. <laughs> it is our feeling that Hollywood is a den of sin and we don't usually bother with it. But we must change with the times, and everyone likes a good movie. So when Mr. Jeffers called to ask for money for a film about the early missionaries in the Old West, we were very interested. If the Lord had this technology, I'm certain the Ten Commandments would be written on celluloid rather than stone. <laughs> we feel the movies are basically an updated version of the Sistine Chapel, a way to tell the story of God to the common man. And with ever-decreasing attendance at Sunday Mass, well, we've got to bring the young people back into the fold. We told them the wagon train was a parable for the Stations of the Cross. They ate it up. I envisioned Mel Gibson as Lucas and Goldie Hawn as Helen. Can't you just see them trekking across the prairie, spreading the word of God? Then those photos showed up. I mean, I'm open-minded about some things. A little nudity is not the end of the world. In fact, a young boy with his still developing muscles can be a beautiful thing. I was shocked and amazed. I didn't know a dog could do that. They tell me it was Mr. Jeffers' dog, Peppy. Now I think a dog is man's best friend in everything, but
but there were rumors that it was a male dog in these photos with Mr. Jeffers, and you know how God feels about homosexuality. <clears throat> I'm not prude, but those photos went beyond good taste. Maybe it's not Mr. Jeffers. I mean, the lighting is uh, so bad. It could be any of a dozen producers that I know. They all look the same in that position. Well, the only proper way to mount a canine is from the rear hind quarter at an angle of approximately 86 degrees, utilizing short, repeated thrusting movements. If you want my honest opinion, I think it's a fiendishly clever photo montage. Sour grapes on Mr. Hankel's part. I mean, it was a major setback to Guns and the Clackamas. This could have ruined Mr. Jeffers' rep reputation, not to mention Pepe's. The ASPCA handed out leaflets to all dog owners with Mr. Jeffers' picture on it saying, stay away from this man. Whenever Mr. Jeffers would walk down the street, people would bark at him. And then there were the drive-by barkings. Nevertheless, Mr. Jeffers continues on guts and ambition with the hope that the completed scenes would be impressive enough to uh, attract more money. The Man Dog Love Organization offered a bundle, but Mr. Jeffers thought it advisable to turn him down. Unfortunately, the uh, dog episode left the production with a bad smell in Hollywood. Excuse me. Uh, Ms. Hopkins, hold all calls. I'm in a conference. Sorry. Let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, but, you know, with... Uh, all the out-of-work actresses, I felt we could get a great turnout for the Helen character. And in the marks there, give us your name and then read the copy. Name is Sugar. Uh, oh, sorry. My love for you flowers like the dust storm of density. Oh, oh, Sunny. Oh, Sunny, my love for you flowers like flows. the... Flows like the... Oh, Sunny, my love for you flows like the... Dust storm a density. Desti destiny. Oh, Sonny, my love for you. My love for you flows like the dust storm of destiny. Oh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny. Sonny. Sonny, my love for you flows. My love for you flows. My love for you flows like buffalo on Mars. My love for you flows. My love for you flows and flows. It's like the, like the dust storm of spit on the concrete. Like a dustbin of destiny. Like destiny. Like the dust storm of destiny. Destiny. This is sexist. Oh, Sonny. My love for you flows like the dust storm of destiny. Oh, Dusty, my love for you flows like a dust storm through destiny. <laughs> That's it? Can I go now? Thank you. So we cast Selena Randall in the Helen role. She was head and shoulders above the rest. Thank God we found an actress who has talent and beauty and was conveniently in a coma during the whole Pepe episode. There was a question of continuity in the acting, but unfortunately we couldn't afford to reshoot the scenes with Miss Starr. But you know, people don't ever notice a little change in character. People go to the movies to escape reality. It's fantasy. Oh, Sunny, if you leave me again, I think I'll just bust. I had my reservations at first, but after looking at it a number of times, uh, I hardly noticed. Ah! Hi, my name is Wally, Buzz Pilar. I'm the special effects supervisor for Guns on the Clackamas. This is one of my special effects. I thought that scene worked fairly well, considering the money and time constraints we had to work with. Hello, Nigel Nado here. I do hope we can get together sometime soon. I'll get back to you. Mr. Jeffers, it's Nigel Nado. Remember me? You hired me to do a documentary on guns on the Clackamas. I'm sorry, I'm much too busy to meet with you now. Well, 
Perhaps we could do an interview over the intercom. I was born to very poor parents in southern New Jersey. We never had enough to eat and there was no television. I didn't see my first film until I was 13 and it was a complete revelation. That coffee machine is fixed now. I dedicated my life from that day forth to using my filmmaking genius to improve <clears throat> the state of the world. Something's wrong. I know that I have... Uh, Mr. Plato, I'm afraid you can't enter that office. We've been duped. On Mr. Jeffers' orders, we had to cut costs immediately. Well, you know, on all Hollywood films, there's terrible waste and duplication. So we started cutting a few corners. We sort of knew that production was in trouble. They brought the payroll guy down to explain, and he said that calculator batteries had died, and he didn't have any more. Of course people were complaining about not receiving their checks. I don't blame them. Seems I had disappeared for a while. I don't like to talk about it. In fact, it's hard to believe. I only found out about it through hypnosis. Seems. I was abducted by space aliens all last month. They forced me to have repeated sex with a large, multi-breasted creature. Looked female. God, I hope it was female. I called her Katrinka. There was uh, talk of using the back side of the film stock to save money on the film. Seemed like a pretty good idea. And she was the only one who ever asked if it was good for me. She really cared about my needs. None of this me, me, me business. It's, um, it's not easy to talk about this. I mean, I, I should have said something then. <sighs> you can't treat human beings like that. It's, it's just wrong. Right? You gotta maintain some standards of decency. It's, um, and the quality of those donuts is it's intolerable. I noticed there were less sprinkles on the donuts. Uh, that and the, the cream filling was absent a lot of the donuts. You know, after carrying big cameras, rigs, and you know, yeah, I look forward to those little sprinkles. And I just sort of lost my enthusiasm for the project. Who knows? Maybe we can settle down, raise a family, have a lot of little multi-breasted creatures running around. Then maybe we can start our own business. Nothing fancy, a simple mom and pop intergalactic convenience store. Anything but accounting. I came up with a great idea for a moneymaker, a real cash cow. Knowing how people love large eye paintings. Nifty, huh? I thought they'd sweep the country, you know, like pet rocks. I invested thousands in them, but nobody bought them. They just didn't reach the stores. It's all marketing, you know. Do you want to buy a pair? I got boxes of them. Well, my camera crew uh, came up with one money-making idea. Um, they put a hidden minicam in Selena's dressing room, which, you know, at first kind of pissed me off, but, uh, but you know, the, the footage was really quite beautiful. And uh, the sound guys put some Swedish language tapes over the top and they sold it as a porno movie. Har du dom kaker med iskrem? Når stenger postkontoret på lørdager? They titled it Ovulating Girls of Oslo. And uh, it was a big hit. You probably saw it. Another money-making idea we had was a lottery in the local town. For $10 each, you could try your luck and win a scene in the film. We did great. Got about $2,000 that way. I was kind of hoping when people saw him in the film that we'd get to move to Hollywood. Go on, Delmo, show him your John Travolta thing. You know, the melon business isn't going so good right now. It's grapefruits. Grapefruits are killing us. Grapefruits for breakfast, grapefruits for dinner, grapefruits for dessert. 
We think it's a time for a career change. Oh, Helen, it makes me so happy just to look into your beautiful eyes. It makes me so happy that you'd be able to stay. You know, I got this one script, Melons of Wrath. You want to take a look? It starts off where, in the scriptures, it tells about the Melonites and how they travel across the ocean and how they planted the first fields. The fascinating aspect about Guns on the Clackamas is that they actually finished the film with no money at all. Mr. Jeffers hasn't paid anyone a red cent. He is a master of resourceful filmmaking. In fact, some of the most amazing scenes in the film are the result of impromptu thrift. Here, Holton Jeffers is making a statement about alienation in contemporary society. Modern man must return to nature, become one with it, to survive. The common lackluster attitude to the space-time continuum that most small-minded people take for granted is that the universal time sequence flows in a linear fashion. But with the now famous Jeffers rafting scene, he's thrown that all out the window. Thank goodness the attack is over. Do you think they'll return? They surely will, Helen. I think we'll load the wagons and move on over the mountains. They're so far away. Only a couple days ride, really. With all these cutbacks, we were forced to shoot only one take per scene. That famous campfire scene was actually a mistake. We were supposed to shoot that one with a cloth over the lens to make it look like night, but we had to use the cloth for emergency bandages. Boy, it sure is a cold night out. Yeah, you can't see a thing either. <laughs> Isn't that the Big Dipper up there? Oh. Sonny, do you think the Indians will return? Don't worry, Helen. Indians never attack at night. Throw another log on the fire. What Mr. Jeffers is trying to tell us is that day and night are common base cultural constructs that simply don't hold water in the real world. Is it not day and night on this planet concurrently? In the final analysis, is not one person's day another person's night? As the poet philosopher Paul Simon put it, one man's ceiling is another man's floor. Or Gershwin, you say potato, I say potato. Our bills were piling up much faster than we could pay them. We were still way behind. So we had to cut even more off our production values. And, uh, well, unfortunately, our lack of safety measures was catching up to us. We asked the carpenters to retrieve half the screws on the set and return them to the hardware store for our money back. Those things can really add up. They sold all the fire extinguishers and emergency exit signs to some shady-looking fat guy. Obviously, I was not happy at all to hear about the financial cutbacks. In fact, I, of course, vigorously fought the safety cutbacks. I even threatened to quit. But I couldn't. I couldn't leave those poor, helpless people to the dangers that lurk on every movie set. What do we do? We can't escape. You're gonna have to send someone out there. That was an unfortunate accident that could have been avoided. Bob was up on the light ladder when the interlocking buckle snapped. You see, if this particular joint is not properly maintained, it can very easily snap. Damn! Son of a bitch! Not again. 40% of all accidents occur because of faulty materials. We had to redouble our efforts. They're getting closer, Sonny. What are we gonna do? I know. I'll get more ammo. Go, oh, my leg! Run away, camera! Oh, my God! Oh. My astrologer said that I shouldn't have taken the job. And she smelled something wrong. Only thing the film insurance covered was 
attacks, killer bee attacks, and they've shown the footage over and over on TV. So now I've got all these wacko perverts into gimp sex writing and calling me, and I can't get rid of them. I tried taking Mr. Jeffers to court. Have you ever tried to find him? This is a genuine arm cast signed by all the members of the cast and crew. Just take a look at those monikers. I mean, we had literally hundreds of these, but there's no two the same. Each one's like an individual work of art. This is the little bugger right here. A 49 cent cotter pin. Mr. Jeffers was too cheap to buy brass pins, so he bought tin ones. It snapped, and you can see what happens. People were beginning to doubt my professionalism. Bam! This we call the cotter pin keychain. Just take a look at that. This is fine engineering made in the USA. This isn't your imported monkey metal crap, you know. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a fine, fine piece. Uh, of course, a few of these did fail. In fact, most of them actually failed, but uh, that's only to be expected in this type of operation. Uh, and in fact, the fatalities due to that uh, only increases their value. I think you're going to find these appreciating over the years. <laughs> I threatened to quit, but Mr. Jeffers begged me to stay. When I told my wife, Wilda, that I was going to be doing sound on a, a Lucas Lonzo film, <laughs> well, she, uh, she wanted me to bring home outtakes of his voice <laughs> to play at night during sex. <laughs> no, no I, I'm just kidding. Little did we know that when we cast Lucas for the lead that he had some problems in the odor category. Lucas, he had some definite mouth problems. His oral hygiene was very deficient. His mastication, very incomplete. Basically, he stunk. We tried to be delicate about the problem. We would place bottles of mouthwash around the set. One day we all wore gas masks. He thought it was Halloween. I never saw him eat on the set, but, but he always had food in his mouth. I mean, <laughs> the guy was like a, a chipmunk. He had food pouches inside his cheeks, I swear. But, uh, you know, the thing that really turned me against the guy was the way he treated Selena. And, uh, you know, she was, she was a, a goddess. And, uh, and he treated her like dirt. I mean, her face, and her face is so, Perfect, smooth without a blemish, you know, perfect for lighting. You know, we would always share our lunches together. <laughs> so, um, you know, we would always share our lunches together, and, uh, you know, she was always uh, so cute handing me her pickle. I, I never realized how truly beautiful a dill pickle was. Damn it, Selena, you gotta kiss him. It's in the script. You know, I have bungee jumped off a bridge. I've appeared nude in biker movies. And once, I even put on my own makeup. But I will be damned if I'm gonna kiss that stink machine. Yes, you will. This is costing us $1,000 a minute, so damn it, kiss him. Quiet on the set. Well, I could tell uh, Selena really loved me. I mean, uh, she couldn't stomach kissing Lucas in front of me. Well, you see, he liked to keep those leftover food particles in his teeth, and then later in the day he would snack on them, like that. Well, unfortunately, the food would slowly decompose and rot in his mouth and give off this. I just gotta say it, it was a god-awful stench. I mean, sometimes he would dig out bits of meat that had sat in his mouth for days. It was kind of greeny and slimy. He claimed it was a tenderizing method. 
It was the most advanced case of mouth rot I'd ever seen. We must have flushed three quarts of gunk. There were at least three weeks of hamburger bits in there, and well, look at the fuzzy thing. God only knows what that is. <laughs> Would you please try and keep it down in there? Oh, this, this is a very, very popular item. This is the Lucas Lanza saliva lamp. Just take a look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Look at that effect. You know, the dentist was very, very generous with the ingredients here. These babies went for about, uh, ooh, 100 bucks a pop. Well, I immediately put him on an all mint diet and assigned him his own round the clock personal oral hygienist. Let's get it right this time, or Kodak's gonna own this film. Guns on the clock, miss. Scene 10, take 74. Action. Cut. Great, cut. Hey, that's not in the script. What are you doing? He's raping her. Get the hell off her. Kill her alone. Hey, hey, What a mess. I never saw such a handsome and roughly hewn face chopped to shreds like that. I mean, imagine how Michelangelo would feel seeing his Piete smashed to bits. Well, that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> The cameraman had some wacko idea that Selena was his girlfriend uh, because she had shared her pickle with him. <laughs> Selena was allergic to pickles. The only thing she was in love with was her career. Now this, this is real love. After the big fight, we couldn't have Billy and Lucas in the same room, so we had to use the assistant cameraman for the big victory feast scene. Well, unfortunately, he had little experience in loading cameras, and the film was loaded backwards. Well, I was asked personally by Mr. Jeffers to be on the set to attend to the psychic needs of the cast and crew. And of course, he also asked me if I would pass my hands over the film cans to make sure the energy was positive. We'll get in this time. There's no admittance here. We're here to do a strippogram for Mr. Jeffers. It's his birthday, you know. Can you show us the way? So what's he got? Uh, that's our music. Yeah, there have been a lot of people trying to get on the set here. Oh. Let's see your dance. This is Nigel Nado. The camera equipment rental is costing me quite a lot of money. If you have decided to replace me, please let me know. Thank you. So that's what 45,000 volts going through a human being looks like. It was a shock to us all. Mr. Fellows was one of our generation's finest writers. Although you wouldn't know it to look at his work. At least it saved the cost of cremation. <laughs> <laughs> now Mr. Fellows had his fourth house in Challenger. Now that is a very negative sign.
People just don't know how to properly handle power cords. Electricity is our friend, but it can also be a monster if not properly handled. You must always check to make sure the cords are unplugged before you ever take the positive end and the negative end and put them together. He was such a giving and talented man, although you wouldn't necessarily know it from his work. I don't know where you are, Mr. Jeffers, but this is America, where justice always prevails. Usually. You can run, but you can't hide. While the official word was that uh, things were going hunky-dory, there were these nasty rumors going around that the film was in trouble. In short, we couldn't be choosy about hiring our next head writer. The film had an R rating. That's the trouble with today's films. There's too much death and hate. I wanted to bring more than love to the guns on the Clackamas. In fact, I, uh, I even proposed a new title, Warm Feelings on the Clackamas. I've always felt the West was portrayed as too rough and ugly. I wanted to explore the erotic, sensual nature of the Old West. Men and women, women and men, men and horses, women and lots of men, men and leather, men and horses and leather, men, women and horses, buffaloes, horses and women. I always fancied myself, oh, uh, a funny F. Scott Fitzgerald, you know, uh, humorous Hemingway, a uh, rollicking John Paul Sartre. <laughs> I uh, wrote tons of material for them, but I heard, I heard that they only used part of it for the death scene. I wrote tons of great material for them, but I heard they only used the part for the death scene. Yep. Wrote some terrific material for them, but they only used a little bit of it in the death scene. Oh, by the way, if you see Jeffers, tell him I'm still waiting for the check. Eh? The check. It's a poison arrow. We'll have to get the antidote in a hurry. Hold on, darling. Sonny, the lights are getting dim. I have to tell you something before I die. I've never told anybody this before. Yes, darling? When Bootsy and Tootsie meow all day long, Mother Cat purrs and sings a sweet song. Even now, I can feel your hot, steaming love axle <laughs> work its way into my quivery chamber of delight. Come closer. A guy walks into a bar with a duck on his head, and the bartender says, What'll you have? And the guy says, I'll have a whiskey. And the bartender says, What'll the duck have? And the guy says, That's, that's no duck. That's, that's my... Now, Lucas Lonzo, I read his chart. Skylab is in his seventh house, but he had soy's descendant. I hope the cavalry gets here soon. Helen needs that medicine. Sissy, in this life, there's one thing you can always rely on. That's the cavalry. They'll make it in time. What happens if the Indians get him before they get here? Well, there's lots of Indians around here more likely to get us than the cavalry. Well, I see them all over the place. Well, do you think they'll burn down the cabin? Well, if they do, we'll build another one. These two hands built this cabin, they can build another one. There's no, don't you worry about that. You're so strong, Gramps. You'll fight them off, won't you? Yeah, I sure am. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you think you can teach me how to shoot a gun? Oh, in nothing case I to have it. To? Nothing to it. 
This gun right here would be just about your size. That's a good gun for you. You think so? Oh my god, maybe we can. Who knows CPR? I know how. I can help her. Hey, this is the same thing. Hey, he's choking it. Get off me, you know. Well, you know, it was only a joke. I wasn't meant to go that far. Stop breathing. We gotta get his heart pumping again. Here, clear back, everyone. Are you crazy? You know, the quicker we get them out of the gene pool, the better. It's not only an actor anyway. I mean, what's the big deal? Somebody better care of a doctor. Wait, wait, we can't afford that. He's got medical insurance. Here's your wallet. I saw your wallet fall out right there. Here. There it is, here. Yeah. Some credit cards. Get the money. Here's some cash. That ought to get an ambulance. Hey, wait. He owes me 25 bucks. Yeah, Sissy. I owe Sissy. Sissy. The guy at the at the novelty shop said that the itching powder was completely harmless. You know, these damn actors. They're just always goofing around. You have to prove malice and intent. And my client was simply trying to add a little levity to the set, trying to raise the morale of the cast and crew. Who would ever have thought it would have gone so wrong? 100% homespun polyester. Check those out. Look at the workmanship there. We put ads in all the women's magazines. They just went nuts for these. <laughs> we had Lucas signing them right up until his death. Look at that. Well, basically, I knew that he was not long for this world. But you know, I just couldn't tell him that. Well, can we turn the camera off, please? Is it off? We're still here at humming. Is that it? That's the battery recharging. It's off? Okay, because I don't want anybody to know about this, okay? But there was a, you know, specialized market for underwear that was, um, well, how can I put this? Um, soiled. The bigger, the more money. Just check this out. <laughs> That's money in the bank. The food was getting real bad, so one day we decided to ask the caterer for a big feast to cheer everyone up. Well, it was some kind of big pork roast, like a luau. Well, Mr. Jeffers was delighted, and after he complimented the chef, he couldn't find Peppy. That was the last time we heard of that caterer. Rumor has it that Mr. Jeffers locked Mr. Tompkins in the Porto John. I'm sure it's just hearsay. It was really hard to hear his screaming with the noise of the engines and all, and well, I really don't pay attention when I dump those things. I mean, why should I? I try to pay as little attention as possible to 400 pounds of human waste and toxic chemicals being poured into my tanker. Mr. Tompkins, Apollo. Poor guy, that amount of fluid in his lungs. He's probably swimming in that muck for days. While the true controllers of our destiny are the satellites spinning away in the heavens up above. Ever since the space race, mankind has been lost. Think about the divorces, the earthquakes, the fires, the disasters. I mean, none of that happened before the 50s. You know, the quirky thing about it was that the cast demanded to be fed first because uh, oftentimes we never had enough. Uh, and by the time we found out that the macaroni salad was bad, the uh, entire cast had already dug in. I've never seen such retching and vomiting. So, Miss Joth, do you deny the fact that you left the macaroni salad in the sun? Okay, first, I use only pure, natural, organic, blessed ingredients in all my food. Okay, second, it was only partly sunny. There were clouds because I saw them. Here come the cavalry. We're saved. 
Get the hell on the medicine. Those actors were real troopers. I don't know how they could function in that state. It was like Vomit City. More like uh, Vomit Lake. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. Oh, I've never known such a bright day. We're saved. 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 It takes a trained eye to spot bad macaroni salad. I have that eye. In fact, if I had been on the set that morning, none of this would have happened. Unfortunately, I had a bit of an accident and had to be rushed to the hospital, but <sighs> these things happen. Don't you feel any responsibilities for the health of all those innocent people? I believe that we are all responsible for what we choose to attract to ourselves. I believe that those people chose to attract disease to their bodies as a way to learn. Besides, the minute I stepped on that set, I could feel the bad vibes. I do not believe it was the macaroni salad. I believe it was karma. Now, now, if you look closely, you may actually be able to see bad amoeba and paramecium screwing like the dickens and multiplying like crazy. Now, this is a bowl of good macaroni salad. Perfectly clean, fresh, and safe to eat. Mr. Huggins, that was the bad macaroni salad. No, 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 no. This, this was from the good, um... If you ask me, it was the spiritual stench of that film that caused the bacteria to manifest into the food. It makes me feel so... Sad for them. <coughs> Could you please send an ambulance to 107? <coughs> I tried to reach Mr. Jeffers for help, but uh, he was hiding from all the bill collectors. And uh, he was busy at work with his new big budget film, Hula Cowboys. Well, Bart, this town's too small for the both of us. You better leave Dry Gulch. Not without Missy Ann. We're in love and we're going to get married. Oh, Bart, be careful. Our reputation in town was negative to be kind, so I hired this guy. He looked like a doctor. He wore a medical outfit. The, uh, the grease stains were a bit out of character, but uh, we all thought he was a sloppy eater. And this Senor Kaplan keep yelling at me, fix them sick peoples. He keeps yelling macaroni. And I said, no, I already ate. I don't want to think in macaroni. These people look bad, sick, no good. My madre always gave me chili with lots of lard and reja chili peppers to fix you right up, compadre. So I give them to the sick peoples. And they walk around real good and they do real well for a while and then, then I don't see them again. They never pay me my money. Pendejos, gringos, americanos. There was some kind of exotic bug or worm in the chili peppers that carried a very rare virus. And the sad and tragic thing about the virus was the side effects just before death. It's quite hard to explain. Apparently the uh the chili peppers caused some kind of chemical reaction in the actors to make them speak like uh, uh, Sinbad the Sailor or uh, Captain Hook, I, I don't know which, uh, maybe both. We had faith in ourselves and shiver me timbers you made it. Gramps. Gramps was born under Pioneer 2. Oh, I feel so sorry for that man. And there was something to do with the cerebral cortex and the vocal cords. Uh, and then there was some chemical reaction with the hypothalamus uh, that caused this kind of contortion ah, in the back of the guttural part of the throat. And uh, therefore, it came out like a, a seafaring uh, person. I don't know. Oh, kill Halt, the scurvy dog. Oh. Scarlet. <sighs> You'll taste me cutlass, you swine. Salute. 
batten down the hatches. I think the red peppers had a real negative effect. Hey, land lovers, walk the plank. Now, guns on the clock and this was especially challenging because, well, they'd lost their financing right from the top and all these dead bodies kept popping up as if they were trying to sabotage my career. So it was on my shoulders to keep the police, the doctors, and the press attention diverted. I mean, just check out these clippings. I should have been paid double overtime. The cops and the press were very curious. We had dead actors up the yin-yang. We closed the set telling everyone it was a sex scene, but the city folks got suspicious when we tried to buy 30 body bags. I found one guy in the valley had an eight millimeter film wrapped around his throat, strangled in a dumpster. Thank you all for coming. I know there's been some questions about the status of guns on the Clackamas. Well, I've called this press conference here to just lay to rest any doubts you may have about the film. Here's Selena, and as you can see, she's just very tired. We've been filming night and day to make our deadline, and she's gonna be saving her voice for the camera, so I'm going to uh, relay all her answers here today. Any questions, questions, please? smell like rotting fast food my partner threw up what about the rumors of you being seriously sick <laughs> well, selena says you can see she's just fine and fit and anxious to finish guns in fact she's just signed a deal with mr jeffers for her next film the trail led clearly to mr holt and jeffers we had an airtight case She'd also like me to tell you that working with me, Miss Brewster, has been a real joy and pleasure, inspiration. In fact, she's beautiful, talented. And, oh. What about the desk? Well, I, I don't think we want to. We don't want to. That's it. That's it. This is out of hand. Come on. Come on. Uh, that's it. That's all we have to say. If she's dead on her feet, come on, guys. Uh, give her a break. Come on. Give her a break. This is it. It's over. Sorry. Finish. Finish. That's it. That's it. It was one of the most blatant cases of torture, murder just really bad hair. That's it, that's it, Finny, Nick. But after I questioned Mr. Jeffers, he was very nice. First he offered me macaroni salad, and well, showed me a copy of his script, Cop Cowboys, told me it might be a part in it for me. Well, what could I do? Here's the dilemma. There's absolutely no money in the bank, and I've got a payroll to meet. So what have we got a lot of that's worth anything? It was at this point that uh, a good college buddy of mine came to me. Uh, he said that uh, some bodies had uh, recently come on the market, some dead bodies. Then out of the blue, this old college buddy of mine calls. Gives me this sob story about being fired as a top forensic pathologist. I knew certain wealthy individuals who would pay top dollar for body parts. Uh, and we were very fortunate to have some very famous body parts, uh, such as uh, Lucas Lonzo. So then it hits me. I put two and two together. Uh, there was, matter of fact, there was a bidding war over his big toe. Uh, some, some woman grabbed it and was screaming, this is mine, I saw it first, and uh, another fellow from uh, Seattle actually uh, wrestled her to the ground, grabbed the toe in his teeth, and went screaming out of the store, I'll write you a check, don't worry. Well, the proper way to dispose of a body is to use 30, 40 tsetse flies from northern Uganda. Once the flesh has been destroyed, the cranium skeleton can be made into a charming pen and pencil holder. And the rest of the bones can make a very musical and hard to trace wind chime. Guess who? Mr. Jeffers, if you're trying to sabotage my career, I wish you'd just hire someone to put a bullet in my brain. Well, I could tell you getting those dead people to look alive was tough. As soon as that rigor mortis sets in, it's tough as hell to get them in any lifelike position. I mean, you have to break the joints with a large hammer. And if you're not careful, 
the bone starts coming through the decaying flesh. Oh, honey, could you bring our guest some of those sliced pork sandwiches? One of the tricks is to shoot them before they bloat. Once they puff up, their costumes are impossible to fit. It may have smelled bad, but I tell you, the actors were real dolls to work with now. No back talk or questions about motivation. Would you like to travel west with me? The sun feels so nice. I could just lie here forever. OK, cut, cut. Very good. Now let's move these bodies to the next setup. The actors were getting real gamey, and flies became a problem. You'd be surprised how much noise a hundred flies can make. Being a film director, we're sometimes forced to find creative solutions immediately. Sometimes these solutions can add a real unique and original flavor to a film to make it a success. Gramps, who turned out the light? Why don't you light that lamp? Damn these matches. Got wet in the thunderstorm. Won't work. When word finally got out about all the deaths on the film, Mr. Jeffers arranged a huge benefit for the orphans of the actors as a premiere. Well, the publicity was fabulous, and we took in tons of money. Unfortunately, the orphans never saw a dime. I heard Mr. Jeffers bought a new boat. We're really very excited about this. This test screening will prove that Guns in the Clackamas is going to be a blockbuster. People from all walks of life, from all over the world. Oh, oh, hey, where are you going, buddy? Hey, hey. It, it's the, the, the movie's still on. Hey, come here. Where are you going? Whoa, whoa, buddy. Where are you, where are you going? You couldn't it's drag not... me back into that movie, it's, man. It's, it's not over yet, man. It's not over. Hey. Who is it? It's me, Sonny. Well, I'm leaving now. Helen, I hope you decided to come with me. It's a fine day to leave. Are you sure you want me, Sonny? Do you love me? Of course I love you, Helen. What do you think? Do you love me as much as you love your frying pan? Of course I do. I can't bear to see you do this to me. Do you love me as much as you love your snowshoe? I want you to look me in the eye and tell me you love me. I love you. Let's run away, but we must wear these. It's bee season, and you can't be too careful. <laughs> the dust storm of destiny oh sunny my love for you flows like the dust storm it was a beautiful piece of existential filmmaking who could fail to see the parallels to pirandello peckinpah curly howard the dilemma how we human beings often deny our very existence. He's asking the eternal question, is this our reality? Or is it someone else's? This weighty little number here, The Myth and Meaning of Guns on the Clackamas by Edwin P. Morehouse, um, limited edition, signed by all the cast and crew, posthumously. Check out those toe prints from the morgue. As my work on the documentary progressed, I became increasingly aware of a mystery, a paradox, a puzzling, perplexing, enigmatic riddle which refused to be solved. What, I asked myself, was the real reason behind the fall of Holton P. Jeffers, colossus of the contemporary cinema? Mr. Jeffers, it's Nigel Najo, remember me? You hired me to do a documentary on guns on the Clackamas. You 
This stuff smells weeks old. So there you have it. An ironic end to a tragic story. One of Hollywood's greatest legends brought down by one of nature's teeniest microbes. But the story is not all tragedy. I still prefer happy endings. Wait, I know you. You were one of the actresses. You're supposed to be dead. How did you survive the food poisoning? It wasn't easy. I knew the film was going down the tubes fast. Luckily, Buzz and I were in the dressing room, rehearsing my lines. And when we came out, half the cast was writhing in pain and vomiting. I knew something was up. I thought it was the perfect opportunity to get out of that turkey of a film. So with a little help from Buzz. It was very easy. A little latex rubber here, makeup there. She looked real dead. I must tell you, I didn't relish lying there with my fellow dead and stinking thespians. Now we're happy and alive, but more importantly, off that film. Macaroni salad? Come on, you must have liked something about the film. Huh? Huh, buddy? So Kaplan is now president of the Big Eye Club of America and has had his eyes surgically enlarged. Carl Safety First Huggins was fortunately revived and immediately hired a safety advisor on the new Bruce Willis action film. Flowers may be sent to his widow. Lloyd Krankauer is in the middle of a lawsuit against Nigel Nado for breach of promise. Horst Heinkel is now producing seminars entitled Why Stutter When You Can Yodel? Bambi Star is his assistant. Miss Fellows is filing a paternity suit against J. Lyle Hadley. James X is now directing Margarine infomercials and has changed his name to James Y. Dickie the janitor has moved up in the corporate world. He's now cleaning the floor above. Dell and Shuleen Curry were indicted for food fraud after trying to pass off vinegar-injected watermelons as the world's largest pickles. The cleavage, huh? Well, the, like cleavage the cleavage was fine. The cleavage was fine, yeah, but good the movie cleavage. was. Oh, Sunai, my love for you blows like a dust storm of destiny. When you see me, says ours. Okay, smile. Well, you smile. Great. Oh, God, I think maybe I messed it up. Did I mess it up? Yes, you give everything you want. When you tie your heart. My love for you flows. Oh, like the dust. Thanks for coming. Like the dust. That leaves place. to an empty shore. Then you'll catch the dream of a low. Um. Oh, Sunny. And ride it out till more. Oh, Lord, this can't be the end. I'll kill you. Then I'll kill myself. Help me up. Help me out of this pain that I'm in. Oh, Lord, this can't be the end. Like the. Dust, 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 dust. dust. What's wrong with my eyes? Or are they crossing again? When you're warm.
Then you hear the cry. I am your local and way representative. Let me show you what I got here. I got a little spray, something that'll freshen up the room. How about that? on the camera because the, no, the effect is really a, a nice it's a much no. better effect I know but you know I'm, I'm trying to give you a suggestion as well you know I've done this before oh Sony Like the dust storm of destiny. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Dust storm of destiny. I should have remembered. Yes, Sunny. My love for you flows like the dust storm of but destiny. But I, I had one quibble with the word dust. Oh, it's sunny. just, it's a bit pejorative. And I, I need to understand. My love for you flows like the dust storm of destiny. Oh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny. 